175 wanting to talk to you about the home grid battery again um, you've seen it in my power shed here and what I'm doing today is I'm gonna build it from the bottom up and then install it onto 12k Solarx closed loop it and do go through all the the steps the one thing that I I changed just because I like to be able to move the batteries just a little bit into their final position so casters are extremely helpful so what I did on this one is I put I found some casters that were able to hold 1200 pounds and I just bolted them to the bottom of the the home grids base so pretty easy and these had locks on them so it's pretty stable and I'll be able to test that once I have the whole stack built okay so and they're locked now so it's, it's not going anywhere so we're gonna go ahead and um, build this thing up all right so the home grid battery is pretty cool in the way it stacks up yeah it's good so you just uh, this is the connection between the, the batteries you have a breaker on the side that's how you turn it on and off and set dip switch settings so even though you can stack up to eight of these, the limitation on discharge amps is 300, I'm pretty sure it's 300, which is a pretty good match for a, like a 15, 15K Solar because this will pull 275 amps. One thing you gotta watch when you're in California, they will only let you stack 20 kilowatt stacks okay as part of UL I think it's 9540 and now these are the home grid's one of the batteries that has 9540A status so it's got the fire suppression UL certification so there's a lot about this battery that makes it different than some because it has unlike other batteries that have 16 prismatic cells, the home grid has 15 prismatic cells. And what that allows them to do, is so it runs at a little lower voltage, like 49 volts versus the, these style batteries that run at 51.2 nominally. So we're just doing a six stack in here, and then we'll put the BMS control unit on top. Now each battery does have its own BMS, and this is the master BMS here and then that sits on top just like another battery it's a little bit lighter these batteries are about a hundred forgot exactly you can look in the spec sheet but they're about a hundred pounds each so that's the stack it's a very nice looking battery again we've taken it apart we got some fingerprints on it but it's a super clean looking battery and now I can move it so this is what I was after the ability to move this thing so I'm going to take the casters and unhook that one and that one and now I can move this thing around who what a difference now that might not be a big thing to you but as an installer just being able to work on it get to everything make sure everything's good put it on some casters that will hold the weight and now it's easier to work on and then once you've got everything because this is the area you're going to spend most of your time and if this is out of the way and hard to get to so making the dip switch settings on all you're going to start with the top battery and go one two three four five six with the dip switch settings all your breakers are here and then working on your positive and negative connections being crammed in a corner and is not where you want to work on this thing so once we get this battery together the way we want it then we'll just push it in place with the home runs and you'll see how that's going to connect to the 12Ks. Assembly procedure is this strap 
I'm calling it a seismic strap. Again, this is this is a California rated battery. If it'll work there, it'll work anywhere. In terms of compliance and robustness, the um, then there's covers for each battery. We're going to go ahead and put the covers on this side because there are there's nothing to interfere with the installation. But on this side, we've got to have access to the BMS on and off dip switches. So we leave the covers off of this while we're getting it set up. So there is a procedure to set this battery up. You're basically starting from the top module down and setting the dip switch settings. You can see them in there. That's this one, one to six on my stack. Again, you could have an eight stack. And then there's an installation manual you can go through. And so this is all I did so far is set all the batteries to the correct dip switch settings. Then we put, now we're working on the controller. So the controller or the main BMS sitting on top, there's a set of dip switch settings here. So we're going to put them all on for the inverter. Let's see. Connect. Yeah. So we're going to set all the switches for the inverter set on first. And then what we're doing here is we're trying to detect the number of modules in the system. You see that part? So what we're going to do is turn the main BMS on, power on the controller, and see if we can detect the number of batteries, and that'll be the first step. I turned all BMSs on. Now I'm turning on the controller. I'll take the sticker off later. To see if it detects all six batteries going through its sequence. Yeah, it's seeing one, six, and 63. Relays are clicking, so it detected six batteries. That is correct. And then, procedure is to turn off the controller. Okay, for the battery connections, we landed 4-aught. You can land up to 4-aught wire. We use the Cobra Flex battery cable, which is overkill. We could do this in 2-aught for Cobra Flex, which will carry 300 and... I think it's 350 amps, 356 amps on the Cobra Flex. So, but 4-aught will fit, and we're landing it on these Blue Sea bus bars. So, there will be no no losses there using 4 aught for sure. It's a little tight. We put these cord grips in here to keep um, from cutting that. And there's just enough room to get the cover on. So 4 aught will work if you orient your cables this way. All right, we are hooked up now. What we're going to do now is work on making sure that we can communicate with the Solark through the CAN bus. So when you're connecting to a Solark 12K like we are, this is the pinout for the CAN connection. It's uh, seven and eight on the battery side and four and five on the 12K side. So what we'll do on the master is connect in here to the mod, the CAN bus battery connection. You can see that there. This one didn't quite reach, so we're gonna use a little coupling. And then we'll have a cable that will plug into the can on this side. All right, so we've connected the home grid stack series to the Solark 12Ks, and not only did we connect them electrically, we connected the comms as well. So we made up a cable that connects. There's a battery integration guide in the Solark. We got this labeled nicely. This is the home grid side, it goes into the can bus. And then in the battery on the master inverter into the can, can bus for the battery. And then when you do it right, you get this screen. When you go to Solark and you set the, bat I'll show you where we set that. Under battery setup, you set the BMS lithium battery to zero, zero. Once you do that, you'll get the green box that says lithium battery info. And now you can see we're pulling 94 amps out of the battery. It shows your voltage. This is again the discharge current limit. No matter what, the limit of a home grid is 300 amps. Even if, whether it's a, a four stack, a five stack, six, all the way up to eight, you're gonna get 300 amps is the max that you can pull out of the battery. 
All right, so we're closed loop, and we're running, basically right now running my house. I turned the grid off, I turned the solar off, and we got 2.25 on this one, about two. So we're running 4.5 4 kilowatts off of the battery. Battery is looking good. Tells you a lot, state of health, state of charge, voltages, and the flashing right now is how much it's, it is actually charge, I mean discharging, and then once it's charging, it gives you a little different representation. All right, so we're gonna put the top on. Just, um, we got this little schematic that comes kind of a, we've had it off so many times it doesn't fit like it used to. <laughs> so we have had this battery apart so many times because not nothing to do with the battery, as much as me um, upgrading my powerhouse and moving it. So um, I know we're all tired of moving this thing. So let's go ahead and put that top on. The top, you gotta hold your mouth just right to get that top in. <laughs> it slides, start, hook the front, hook the front and then slide back. And when, you, when, they're, when you're videoing it, it'll never go on right. <laughs> there you go. And then hit it back and then down. There are, you can screw that back. Do you have this, uh, are the casters locked out? Uh, no. So now the battery is built, well kind of, we're gonna put these covers on now and get this thing put together with the covers. And then we're gonna scoot it into its final resting position while this is running. Okay, final position of the home grid battery and fully integrated into the Solarks. So, thing looks good. I'm gonna lock the casters out so this baby can't move. There. Just gonna clean it up a little bit and it's ready to ready to go. So I'll be I'm gonna play around with some time of use settings and really work the battery at night. So I will go in here and and possibly in the app and do some time of use and start utilizing the battery and see how it performs. I've done that before with it, has no problem. So uh, just really sweet. So if you got any questions, let me know. Um, again, you could put multiple stacks Go to Home Grid's website and see just a lot of different ways to, to use the battery. I'm also excited. Home Grid is partnering with Solark for a, a high frequency battery. And I haven't seen it yet, but rumor has it that Home Grid's going to use the same modules and series them to get us a 400 volt battery. Uh, to incorporate with a 15k three-phase solar converter. So again, home grid really worked on the California market, um, which the battery will work in any state, but they had the uh, requirements. I think it's 9540 and 9540A and home grid met them. And there's a few other batteries that have been catching up to that, but they're kind of a pioneering in that way. Again, it's a 15 cell, not a 16 cell battery and soon it will be a high voltage stack to work with the three phase 15k solar i mean sorry the 30k not the 15 30k solar so i'm really looking forward to that so once we get used to you know the 48 volt porting over to the 400 volt won't be an issue i haven't seen the controller with the skybox built in or i haven't worked on that i might ask to see if i could get a new controller and integrate it with with these batteries and uh, and go with that. I have some other modules, some of the first gens. I'm gonna see if I can also incorporate those into this stack and do a full eight stack. Anyway, a lot of options with the home grid. It's a super clean, super tight, compact amount of lithium for the space. So that's another thing. Space requirements. It's a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of energy in a small package. So all right. Any other questions? Let me know. Engineer seven seven five signing out. Thank you.